Hi, welcome to today's um, episode. Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Dr. Sylvia, a general practitioner and health educator with Askaway Health. And this is our Friday live stream. I'm so pleased you're here today. Where are you watching from? If you're joining the live, um, tell me who you are, where you're watching from, what's brought you onto the stream. And if you're watching the replay, thank you so much for clicking um, to learn more about the depot shots. Because yes, we're all about um, talking about things that address women's health, um, especially in the areas of sexual health and reproduction, but anything that has to do with your health as a woman, your children, pregnancy, family. So yes, that includes your, your partner as well. Um, so we do talk about things to do with men's health and we manage to get through a lot of useful health information. So if this is the first time you're coming across me and across the channel, please go and have a look at our different videos and playlists. I'm sure you'll find something useful on them. And I'm really excited today, guys, because we are, as of the last time I checked, which was maybe just a few minutes before this stream started, we are sort of looking at 9,800 subscribers plus. So that means the next time you see me next Friday, oh, actually, maybe a, bit, a little bit after that, we're probably going to be past 10,000 subscribers. That is amazing. So I want to say um, a really big thank you. Thank you to everyone who um, participates with us on this journey, who engages with us, who likes a video, who asks a question, who um, just leaves a comment or whatever. Thank you so much for um, being with us and for making this happen. So today we're talking about problem bleeding after the depot shot, actually during and after the depot shot. So um, I usually love to share questions or comments from viewers just like you, because I think they're, they're, quite, they're quite common. They're not as uncommon as you think. So something happening to somebody out there might be something similar to what you're going through. So I think we can all share and learn from it. So I'm going to share the question so that we can all um, go through it at the same time. Um, and then after that, we'll get into a discussion about what um, the options are for helping out with this particular situation. So, guys, please don't forget the usual bits and pieces. Don't forget to, I'm just going to put it up now. And um, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already. I'll just leave that on for a little bit and then pull up the question. So, like I said, this came in, I think it was sometime this week. Um... I think that this question came through. Uh, let's just see. Oh, did I manage to delete it? I probably managed to delete it. Bear with me. So let me just make sure I've got it on here. So let's get this question on. Okay. So, yeah, let's read it together. So this is somebody who says she took the depot once in February and um, ended in May. So she had just one dose. The whole time I was bleeding and as of now, October, I'm still bleeding after stopping the depot. I went to a doctor. They gave me a hormone to stop bleeding, which didn't help. It made it worse for me. So now I'm just bleeding every day. How can I stop this? So I, I think a lot of people might be able to um, identify with this kind of situation. I'm just running the question again. A lot of people might be able to identify with this scenario, especially on the back of using the depot shot. Um, and so the, the concern is um, she used it just the once for the period between February and May. And while she was on the shot, she was bleeding. Um, and even after she stopped it, she's carried on bleeding and it's really a problem. So here's the second half of her question. Yes, she says, I only took it once and the bleeding is not a period because I'm bleeding every day. I'm only 24 years old. It's not my, it's not th nothing to do with my age. And my weight goes from 140 to 150 pounds. So that's about 70, 75 kilos. She's not overweight. I'm just trying to get my period back. Any pointers on how I can get back to a normal cycle and stop the bleeding? So like I said, this is not an uncommon scenario. Um, we've talked about this in different videos on the channel. And if you're wanting to find out information about the depot shot, if you want to learn more about how it works and um, these effects associated with it, then please go and have a look at the channel. And when I finish this live stream, I will put a link in the description box below for you so you can have a, a look at that. Um, and then we can talk about some a little bit about the depot shots just as an introduction here um, and then look at this question see how we can you know best help this um this lady so just a quick look in the comment section um right so hello to grace kihara hi 
I've been on depot for two months now without seeing my period, but I can hear movement inside my tummy. What, what could that be? That's really interesting. So if you've not seen your period on the depot, I'm not too surprised by that. And hopefully when you started on the depot shot, your healthcare provider would have um, told you what, <laughs> what or what not to experience um, in terms of your cycle on the shot. So it could do any number of things. It is not uncommon to experience irregular bleeding when you first start the depot shot. And it can it, it's different from for us ladies because what might happen to me or what might happen to you or your friend and so on can be completely different on exactly the same dose and brand of the same depot injection. Some people might have irregular bleeding with spotting. Some people might have a heavier blood flow during their periods. Some people might have nothing, no, no change, I mean. So they, they, they just have the same. And then for most of us, after we've been on the depot shot for a few months, tending towards 12 months, we will stop having periods. And this is the nature of the depot shot, the progesterone. So I'm not surprised that you're not seeing your period. That's likely an effect of the, of the depot shot. Um, and if you don't have any any other symptoms, then that shouldn't worry you. Shouldn't worry you. Now, movement. When you say you hear movement inside your tummy, no, I can't say much to this. And I think if you're experiencing something unusual, whether it's movement or pain or discomfort or whichever term you want to use it, then you should have your doctor look at that for you. So I can't say what it could be. Um, whether you're hearing your bowel sounds and they and they seem a bit exaggerated, I don't know. Um, or whether there's actually something unusual going on i can't say this is something i would definitely recommend needs a, a physical examination so in terms of the periods i'm not too worried um but i think in terms of what your the symptom that you've described and you're experiencing i think it's worthwhile to sit down and have a chat with your doctor about it and examine your tummy to make sure that um, everything is going on fine so and i think it's good to add that there's nothing directly linking the depot shot injection to abnormal sounds or movements in your abdomen so i'm not going to blame this on the depot but i do think we should ask the question what is going on what is causing this and it's a good idea to see a doctor so let me know if, if that's helped you grace thank you so much for joining the stream if anybody else is um watching please let me um let me know say hi let me know where you're watching from but okay we're gonna deal with this question from my user so the depot shot or the depot progesterone as you probably gathered as i was speaking to grace is a progesterone injection that's usually given into the bum or to your bottom into your thigh in some women or even into the upper the shoulder in some cases but most commonly into the bottom or the thigh and it's given every 12 or 13 weeks so it's one of these effective long-term birth control options and so what that means is you don't have to remember to take a pill every day or um, you have to put a patch on or put a ring in every week or have to use a condom every time you want to have sex so it's one of those long acting methods that what the advantage is that it takes away from you the um the um, responsibility if you like of having to do something every time or every day and it makes it easier and makes it even more effective apart from the, the, the method itself um in terms of how just how good it does its job it's between 94 to 99 percent effective depending on the person who's using it making sure you have your injections on time you know sometimes life happens your appointment is supposed to be this week but you couldn't make it that week and you come back come in a week or two later and so on so that's the depot. It's a progesterone injection, a progesterone method used by many women around the world. Um, a good number of women have good reports about this method, but a lot of women also have trouble with the method. And I think it's good to be realistic because this applies to any birth control method that we're going to talk about, that some women may get along with it OK, um, and, but some others won't. Um, and does it make it a completely bad method? No, just it's just that we have we're all different. We have either individual um, health circumstances or some medicines we just just don't agree with us, and that's the reality of these birth control methods, particularly those that contain hormone. And one of these side effects with the depot is what we're talking about in this video, because like I said earlier, you could have bleeding that is heavy during your period or longer. So somebody might start taking the depot and then her bleeding period goes from four days when she, in the month when she bleeds and it goes up to seven or it's heavier 
or they may go um she has bleeding in between so if her period was expected at the end of may then she has the period and then she gets another bleed after two weeks and then another bleed at the end of june so it can cause that kind of irregularity there might be spotting or very heavy bleeding in between so it can do all sorts of different bits and pieces to a woman's period um and it is common this this particular side effect is common it's not a rare thing it's not something that will surprise a doctor if you said oh um, i started the depot shot a couple of months ago and this is what's happening to my period it wouldn't surprise us and um, the only one thing to add as well though is that because of the large amount of progesterone because there's a lot of progesterone if you compare the depot shot to the pill for example we're talking about a lot more progesterone hormone in the shot compared to the pill because remember um this depot shot the injection is going to be in your system for about 12 or 13 weeks meanwhile the pill you take it today then the next day and the day after that so it is going to it's going to work its way out of your system a lot quicker than the depot shot and i think that's just one of the downsides of the depot shot is that when you have the injection it's going to be with you until it starts to wear out after the 12 or 13 week period um and so the other thing to remember is as well is that from and i've mentioned it already but just in case somebody's just joining and they didn't pick up on that um, is that after you've been on the shot for eight well should we say probably upwards from six months at very at the very most towards 12 months you may find that you stop having periods because it does that job so well of shutting off ovulation um, and of, of thinning the womb lining so that you don't have bleeding but in some cases um, that job might be a little bit erratic so it thins the lining but then a woman can still have troublesome bleeding but in the majority of the cases, if you've been on the depot shot for a period of time, more than six to 12 months, it's likely that you will not have periods. That is the nature of the shot. So um, experience varies from one woman to another. But in terms of what we're dealing with today, um, let me just pull it up so that we are, if you're just joining me, you know that what we're talking about. I'm just going to share the screen if I can just find the button. Um, is it here? Oh, hang on. Oh, here we go. Okay, so I think I think this is the first one. So this is what we're talking about. Um, so hopefully you can see this. Let me just double check that you guys can see this. Yeah. So hopefully you can see the question. This is what we're tackling today. Um, a lady who's had this experience with her depot shot. So I would like to I would like us to look at it and talk you through how we will solve this problem. What I will be thinking about as your doctor, as your GP, when you come and this is a problem that we're discussing. So first of all, and I've I know this sounds strange because I've just told you, oh, I've just blamed the depot for causing all manner of troublesome bleeding. It does. But when you first appear with this problem, I would want to check that there's nothing else causing the problem. I'm not going to immediately blame the depot shot. And it's really important that we're doing this because if, for example, this irregular bleeding pattern or whatever it is that you're experiencing is caused by another problem, it could be a sexual infection or it could be some kind of Ab, um, a gynecological path, um, abnormality or pathology forgive me for chewing on my tongue um yeah it could be something like um polyps fibroids ectropion something different that's causing the bleeding not necessarily the depot if we ignore that and just focus on the depot problem then we we ignore that we, we don't realize that problem and it stays there and continues to get worse that's not dealing with the problem correctly so we will need to sit down and establish that this problem is really only from the depot. And um, so I've given you examples of other problems that could um, that could lead to irregular bleeding, it's like sexually transmitted infections, even cervical cancer, for example, depending on the age of the lady, we called, we should make sure that it is not what is responsible for this altered pattern of your bleeding. So some of the questions that we want to go through with you are any other symptoms that you're having in terms of the bleeding or is there any pain and um, any changes like weight loss? Are you up to date with your cervical smears? So we will take a further history to try and establish what's going on. Um, this lady says she's 24. In the UK where I practice currently, um, girls or ladies don't start having smears until age 20, um, in, uh, 25 in England. It's different it's not in some of the other countries. Um, so it's important to establish what's going on with smears. That's a really important part of a woman's um, 
um, reproductive or gynecological history. Um, and if somebody has not yet started having smears and we're worried that this may have something to do with the cervix, either because we've examined, we've had a look at the cervix, then it's someone that we, we would want a specialist to look at and decide if there are changes that we should be worried about. So I'm thinking that if she were, if she lived in England, this lady hasn't had her smear, um, but she's going to require tests. Okay, I would recommend that we do some tests to make sure this is not an infection. So those will be swabs that we collect from you. Another type of test will be the ultrasound scan that we want to have a look at the womb. Because if you if, if I've got my dates right, we're talking about eight months. She started in February. She said when she started with the um with the shot, she was having bleeding. She said the whole time I was bleeding. So February all the way down to October. So we're talking about between seven and eight months of this rough bleeding pattern that this you know this poor girl is having um and she continued bleeding while she was while, while she'd had the depot um, and then even after she stopped it she didn't bother going for her second shot in may and from may onwards she's had trouble with uh, with bleeding so it's it's gone on for quite some time so this is something this is not something that we would say well you know go away and sit down no this is something that we'd want to work out because it really really it should be settling if you didn't take your second shot in May, okay? I would expect that the um, progesterone will gradually work its way out of your system. And I will give it about three to four months, really, to completely leave your system. But even with that said, even with that said, there could still be after effects of the hormone. If you watched my other videos on the depot shot, then you realize that I've talked about um, the delay in fertility, when you take the depot shot and i've talked about i think i've done a stream advising a lady who asked about um getting ready for pregnancy with the depot shot and i said one of the things you need to realize is that even when you stop the shot it may take up to 12 months for your fertility to return and for you to start ovulating and then you know fall pregnant and so part of what you should factor into your planning is that gap that period where um pregnancy is possible but it's also possible that fertility is delayed because even though you stopped taking the shot X, Y months ago, um, either it's not completely exited your system or the effect, your body's natural hormone pattern hasn't yet come to normal after the effect of the depot shot. It is temporary. It's reversible, please but it can take time. And that's why I said when I was doing that other live stream that it's a matter of planning. And part of that planning is simply being aware that this could happen. So you factor it in and you don't just think, I'm going to stop the depot shot tomorrow and then get pregnant next month. It could happen in some ladies. In many ladies, it may not. And we wouldn't be shocked because we know this as effect of the depot. So we've talked about what I call this initial assessment stage. So with this lady, the first thing is that assessment and that's to establish that, yes, this problem, this alteration in your bleeding pattern is actually coming from the depot. And um, so we've talked about the tests, um, swabs to check, check for infection. Are you up to date with your smear? If that's applicable, um, an ultrasound scan to see what's happening to the womb and the other pelvic organs. Um, and if we need to have a closer look at the cervix, um, a camera test or a colposcopy to have a look at the cervix, if that is thought to be um, necessary by whoever is looking at you, examining you and, and doing the treatment. Oh, and the other thing as well is um, medication, drugs. Now, um, some of the birth control um, methods that we have, especially the pills, the combined pill, the patch and all that can interact with other medicines that you're taking. Um, but drugs like the depot are less likely to do that, but we still have it at the back of our minds. We still have to check because some girls, some ladies might come in and they're taking some other medicine for another reason altogether. And medicines can interact. So your doctor might also just check with you that you're not taking anything else. She didn't mention it. I don't think she's on anything, but that's sort of the routine that we'll go through. So we've gone through that assessment. We're happy that it's, this is the depot. There's really nothing else here. It's most likely the depot. So this is now the post-assessment. What can we do? How do we manage this problem? How do we allow this lady to go back to essentially a normal pattern where she has her flow, it's predictable, it's not heavy and so on. So there are a few options that could be, um, that could be taken and she's mentioned one of them already. Let me, um, so let me just go back and so that's the first part of her question. I split it into two so that we could to help us to understand. So let me just pull up the second part for you. Um, here we go. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, so this is the second part of the question. So yeah, she said she only took it once and the bleeding is not a period. She's bleeding every day. She's only 24. She's trying to get her um her period back. So basically she said that she went to a doctor, didn't she? She said she went to see a doctor. They gave her some hormone and that made things worse. I think that's really painful because that is what she's not telling lies. That is that's true. So one of the ways that we would a doctor would manage this situation where you're having a troublesome bleeding with the depot, one of the ways is by using hormones. And that means using um, estrogen containing pill in addition at the same time as the depot. Okay, so that's what that's the that's the technique. And the the um the rationale to that, and I touched this a little bit at the beginning, the rationale is that. When you've been using the progesterone from the depot, what it does is it thins the womb. Remember what the depot shot does. It um, prevents ovulation, okay? It can affect the mucus in the cervix, making it a bit thicker so that sperm can travel easily, just making it challenging and difficult for fertilization to happen. But the other thing that it can do is affect the womb lining so that it's not a nice, comfortable space or environment for any fertilized egg to, to, to plant, to implant naturally and safely and progress in terms of pregnancy. So that's what this this progesterone that you're taking as an injection that's it's what it's doing those three different ways that it's trying to prevent the pregnancy so the progesterone has been doing that it's thinned the the um, womb to such an extent that in this particular person the womb is just losing blood it's just shooting blood it's just not doing things in irregular it's, it's quite chaotic so what we do is by introducing that estrogen we create a circumstance where because of the estrogen the womb can recover a little bit put on a little bit of thickness and then create a pattern where you have a bleed for a short period of time and then it stops so just something like a period is what that, that's in the intention. So when you're giving hormones, the purpose is to see if that womb can thicken a little bit, give you some withdrawal period in between some break when you're not bleeding. That's the intention. Does it always work? Sadly, no. And our lady has demonstrated it because she went to her doctor who correctly gave her a hormone um, in the hope that it would help to bring a little bit of a cycle um, a pattern into things for a short while because we don't do this for more than uh, three cycles at a time so you go to your doctor we give you a prescription for the combined pill while you're on the depot in the hope and that's for three cycles three months in the hope that it gives you a little bit of a, a pattern while your body while the effect of the depot your body is acclimatizing or getting used to this you know the long-term effect of the depot um, but it doesn't work in all ladies, and this is the example that we've got in for, for this lady. The second option, which I don't know whether she's had it, I don't know if it was discussed with her, uh, with her, uh, by her, um, her doctor or whoever was treating her. The second option is non-hormonal. Okay, and I know this would be of interest because many of us are you know, quite hesitant about the effects of hormones. I completely appreciate that, um, and this option is available how effective is it we don't have enough evidence to say that this is going to 100 percent work but for some women who either don't want hormones or have, cannot have hormones because of um, health conditions this is a reasonable option to consider the first one is called tranexamic acid and um, for anyone who's interested in any of these this is not something i would not recommend that you just go off and ask for this pill at the chemist or go and buy it online I would always recommend that you speak to your healthcare provider, somebody who's able to assess you, gather all your medical information, do any examination to make sure that any treatment is suitable before you start it. OK, so we share this information with you just to give you some guidance, to tell you this is what's out there and to support you, provide just to provide direction. I would always recommend that you speak to somebody. Um, I am not your physician. I'm not your primary physician. I don't know your medical background. And. I would never go and prescribe any of these things without trying to gather as much information from whoever I'm talking to, whichever lady I'm talking to before going ahead to prescribe it for them. But this solution is out there. This is tranexamic acid. It's a drug that's known as an anti-fibrinolytic drug. And all that means is that it supports 
fibrin, a tough um, a protein that we have in the body that is found in blood clots or that's a component of blood clotting. You know, when you're, you know, if you have a cut or if you're bleeding after some time, the blood stops flowing because a clot has formed. So that's, um, that sticky material, that tough material, that scabbing that you see that forms. One of the key components is this uh, protein called fibrin. Um, but after some time, other mechanisms in the body allow this fibrin to be dissolved. So this particular drug that we're talking about, tranexamic acid, prevents or reducing uh, reduces bleeding by preventing the fibrin from dissolving. So that's why it's an anti-fibrinolytic drug. What it does is that it promotes and supports fibrin so that it helps to stop bleeding. It helps a clot to form, Okay. You can get it in some places without a prescription. Again, I recommend, I know I'm sounding like a broken record. I'm sorry, but I recommend that we go through your history properly and make sure that it's suitable for you because there are some people that it may not be suitable. But it's particularly helpful for somebody who's had regular um, but heavy periods. So by regular, I mean um she's bleeding every 20 uh, 28 days um or 29 or 34 or, but it's regular so it's on within one or two days of regularity not that there's a bleed um and then after six weeks um, and then after two weeks and then after one um, week or something like that but it's not there's a regular pattern it tends to be most effective in that category of women we usually say start it on the first day that you're bleeding and it helps to um it helps to lighten the flow helps to reduce the heaviness of the flow so this is something that could be discussed with your doctor whether this would suit this lady 100 percent, i'm not very sure there's still so much information that would be nice to get from this example of ours that we're working on today and um, in terms of the nature of her bleeding how heavy is the bleeding how i know she says i'm bleeding every day but sometimes when you sit down and and jump break it down you're a bit clearer as to exactly what's going on and that's that kind of information is useful the second um drug that is also non-hormone is called mephenamic acid and this is in the same class as aspirin the drug aspirin um, so these are in the cl class of drugs known as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. And of course, you commonly get them in the shop if you buy um, ibuprofen, as we have in the UK, or Advil, I think, in the US. Um, and it can be very useful for women with heavy blood flow who have painful cramps, because it's also a painkiller, remember. But um, it's been found that it can help to reduce or lighten the heavy blood flow. So it can do that. It's got that dual job. Again, I emphasize, if you want to look at this as, uh, as something to help you with your heavy flow, please speak to your doctor. Make sure it will be suitable for you. Women with asthma or people who have um, excess acid, acid reflux um, disease, taking this medicine could worsen the symptoms okay and in some cases could be life-threatening so i would re i would strongly recommend you're discussing with your provider who knows your medical background and again ibuprofen can be used um especially if bleeding is not very heavy um standard dose of ibuprofen ibuprofen you could try it if you have very heavy painful cramps experience those kind of periods so this is what i would recommend to um this lady with this let's just put it up again this is what i'd recommend with this um for this lady with this particular situation with the depot um she's had it for 13 weeks or so and while she was on it she was bleeding um when she stopped it she continued bleeding they did try her on some hormones that didn't help even made things worse for her and she's continued bleeding so these are some of the options um I think it's worthwhile going back to her doctor now. I would recommend that she should be going back to her doctor. The questions to ask are to make sure that there's nothing else that's contributing towards it. And if you're asking, well, is it possible that the depot could, all this could still be the effect of the depot eight months down the line? Yes, it's possible. But we don't want to make that assumption that it's the only thing. We want to make sure that we've covered all the bases and we've checked that there's nothing else contributing to the problem. Um, so she should have that discussion. It might lead on to having tests and that might clarify things further. Um, since the pill didn't work and it to be since the, I assume that hormone that she, you know she mentioned hormone I assume it's the pill 
don't get me it's an assumption i've shared with you all the information that was given to me um so if that method didn't work it could be good to know why did why it didn't work what what was what really was the experience how was she taking it and so on that would help be helpful and um, they might want to go down the non-hormone options there are some other methods that could be used um some of them are off license, but I think it gets to a point where things are really difficult and one is struggling and um, looking for a solution. It, it's worthwhile at least discussing the um, those other off license options with a specialist, with your GP or um, or another uh, or the gynecologist or other specialist. So that is my take. Um, those are my thoughts. Oh, one important thing. <sighs> bleeding, bleeding, bleeding. Eight months every day. So most likely complication anemia let's not forget that and if you go and have a look at um, my video on uh, what's it called now looking after heavy menstrual bleeding how we assess heavy menstrual bleeding um you know we talked about anemia how that's so important when a woman is losing such blood flow uh, to different degrees on a regular basis and um, so she's at risk of becoming anemic that can show up in different ways being very tired um, extreme fatigue, dizziness in very severe cases, struggling with your breathing, and um, because of course the oxygen, the amount of oxygen that your red, your blood cells are carrying is reduced because they haven't got iron to make the um, hemoglobin that carries those the oxygen. Um, so of course that can create the problem. In really bad cases, it can go on to heart failure. Yes, from heavy menstrual bleeding and anemia to heart failure. I know. It's very serious. So part of the things that we will do for this lady, of course, would be a blood test to check her iron levels um, and to check other causes of irregular bleeding. You know, thyroid function is important as well um, in terms of the assessment that I mentioned earlier. So but I just wanted to make sure we didn't forget anemia as an important part of this lady's workup. Remember that she's talked about how distressing imagine being 24 years old you've got work or you've got school uni and all that to do and you're having to deal with with this problem extremely distressing and um, but also the impact on the health if she's become anemic so i just wanted to chip that in okay guys so that's what we're talking about today i hope this is really helpful i'm really grateful to um my viewer for sending in this question and to all of you please um, feel free to send in these comments or questions and i would love to dive into them remember that Many times I cannot give you a direct answer in the comment section and many times I will direct you to our email information service because that allows us to get more information from you and then we can look at what the possible scenarios can be and then provide you some kind of help and direction with it. So please feel free um, to send in comments and um, questions. And for some that are quite common or that are a bit tricky, I love to talk about them here because I think that we all will benefit from, from that. Right. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a lovely weekend and I'm sure that the next time I see you, we are going to be looking at over 10,000 subscribers. I'm really, I've got a good feeling about that. <laughs> so I'm really confident that's going to happen. But please don't forget to like this video. If you've not subscribed to the channel, kindly just go and do that now. And I will see you next time. Have a great weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.